Okay, well, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today for this webinar. My name is Darren Britton and I am the National Assistive Technology Project Officer at the Australian Disability Clearinghouse on Education and Training, that is ADSET for short. Um, just to let you know, this webinar is being live captioned and to activate those captions, you can click on the CC button in the toolbar that's located either at the top or at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, we also have live captions available via your browser and a link to those will now be added to the chat. Now, while virtually connected today, we are geographically dispersed and in the spirit of reconciliation, I acknowledge the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation in Victoria, from where I am located, and my colleagues from Lushruwita, that is Tasmanian Aboriginal land on which ADSET is hosted. ADSET respectfully acknowledges First Nations people and pays respect to Elders past, present and emerging, and to the many Aboriginal peoples that did not make Elder status. I also acknowledge all other countries and lands from participants in this meeting and also in acknowledge their elders and ancestors and their legacy to us and also to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that are joining this webinar today. Now today's webinar, Unlock the Power of Glean's newest features for streamlined note taking, will be presented by Lee Chambers, um, DSA and Assistive Tech Service Manager and of Glean and Jim Spiralis, Asia Specific Account Manager for Glean. For today's presentation, Lee and Jim will discuss Glean's enhanced features designed to make note taking and learning more practical and efficient. Features uh, include Scribble, QuizMe, uh, multi language accessibility, and the soon to be released AI outlines. But before we begin, just a couple of short housekeeping details. Um, this webinar is being recorded and live captioned uh, by Helen from Bradley Reporting. Um, and this will be available on the ADSET website in the coming days. If you have any technical difficulties, please email admin at adset.edu.au and we'll try and resolve those if we can. Now, today's presentation will run for around 45 to 50 or so minutes. Then at the end, there'll be a 10 minute or so um, time for questions. Um, throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the chat box uh, to chat with us and to with each other. But please remember to choose all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see what you have to say. Um, Jim and Lee are happy to answer questions at the end. And if you have a question that you'd like asked, please use the Q&A box um, rather than the chat box so that we can find those. Um, so without further ado, um, it's over to you, Jim and Lee. Um, yes. Thank you so much, Darren. I'll head over to, to Lee first. Yeah, so I was about to say good morning because um, it is morning where I am. I'm based in the UK. Um, it's fantastic to be on the webinar. Uh, it is 6 a.m. bright sunny morning here. Um, just a slight word of warning that my two children are asleep in the room next door and there is a small chance that at some point they will wake up and come into this room and say, Daddy, what are you doing? Uh, so if I do have to pause for a moment during my demonstration, that will be the reason why, but hopefully it won't come to that. So I will be doing the, the software and the updates part of this demonstration. Um, and Jim will do the introduction and talk a little bit more about um, some of the other things we've been doing at Glean. Over to you, Jim. Thank you, Lee. And uh, it's, it's nice to be back again. And I'm coming to you from the Adelaide Plan, Plains, the home of the Ghana people. And um, I would like to first start um, to reflect on um, the last time we had a webinar with ADSET, we spoke about how Glean was um, highly trusted by a, a several, uh, a lot of institutions. I think it was around about 900, and that was about Octo October last year. And as you can see now, it's trusted by students in over 1,700 um, higher education settings, which is really fantastic. And to help them um, use um, Glean for their note-taking accommodations and as a study tool, uh, importantly for uh, independent learning. So this growth really reaffirms to us that Glean is highly valued for making that real difference for learners around the world. Um, and by the way, for those of you who aren't familiar with Glean, um, it's a highly intuitive and accessible web-based learning tool that's supported with you know, audio recording and transcription technologies. But hopefully um, when you registered for this event, uh, you would have received a, a, a three minute video a link to a three minute introductory video of Glean. Hope you've had a chance to look at it. If not, that's fine. At least go to, as you mentioned, um, outline those features when it demonstrates Glean. 
Um, and hopefully when you do see the, de the demonstration that Lee does provide, you'll quickly recognise that, you know, accessibility is at the heart of its inclusive design. And it, you know, it supports equitable access to content information, and it actually scaffolds the way that students engage and learn. So it's built on the, um, you know, the foundation of cognitive learning theory. And it, as I said, it's about helping students develop their own study, st uh, study strategies uh, that results in improved grades, um, boost their confidence, learner confidence, and certainly reduce stress because everything um, that they're trying to process is captured by Glean. So how do we know that you know, it is valued and getting um, having such a big impact? Well, we have a very close and ongoing relationship with accessibility services and our students, our users around the world. And uh, student voice is important to us. And we gather feedback using a whole range of mechanisms. Now, Lee will elaborate on some of these mechanisms shortly, but one of these um, is our annual surveys. And these surveys involve a really big sampling of respondents. So our most recent uh, 2024 study uh, involved two surveys and we had 2000 students participate. And on your screen, you can see just three key points that we've pulled out from that um, report. And the first one is that 85% uh, of the people who participated in the survey reported that they felt um, greater confidence in their learning using Glean. Now that's quite a high percentage number, which is quite um, crucially important because we know that confidence plays a huge role in maintaining learner engagement. And this percentage figure was also consistent uh, with first year students, which we know can be a real challenge for young adults when they start their first year of higher education when they've after they've left school. So, you know, it's heartening as we know that creating an equitable and accessible learning experience for students um, has a big impact on student retention, particularly in that first year. So as well as being more confident, um, we have 91% of students say that they're better able to manage the college demands that come with all the information overload and feel less stressed about their studies. And we know executive functioning has a big impact on learner engagement and learning outcomes. And you know, we, I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a future slide, but this point's crucial because we know that anxiety can also play a big impact on executive functioning skills such a focus, in, uh, focus and attention and that metacognition that needs to occur. And so that's a really hard to hear that 91% 91 of users say they're able to better manage those cognitive demands of that information overload. And the third uh, point that we pulled out from the survey is probably the most um, impressive and important statistic. And that is that 84% of students actually stated they're getting better results with their studies using Glean. And some students were getting a 9% improvement on their GPA. And so, you know, really this is good uh, validation for us. So anyone um, here in the um, audience today who's looking to recommend to uh, Glean to students, um, you know, these figures are a good validation of that. But it's also validation for us at Glean because we're always trying to continue to build a really incredibly useful tool. Now, if, if you'd like to know more about these figures that are on your screen, uh, please head over to our website. Um, this data comes from the survey called the Glean Grades Challenge 2024, and the white paper can be downloaded uh, from um, our website, as I said. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is um, ask a question. Um, we'd like to run a poll um, because that survey pro probably um, included students who access accessibility services and maybe not as many students who don't. Um, and we do know that there are many students who don't register for accepted services. So I'd like to ask you just quickly, if you would like to uh, put up, what percentage of students with disability uh, do you think um, don't register for your uh, um, service? Or which, uh, or will, what percentage will register with your service? While people are answering, Jim, I may just jump in with a very quick question um, that was around the survey. That there, somebody asked, um, how many uh, Australians responded? Do you have a breakdown um, with your survey uh, of the uh, the previous slide? Yes, sorry, um, yes. 
Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think it was primarily US-based students. Lee might be able to give me some more information because um, he would have access to that survey being built and distributed. Yeah, the, I and think the Australian the, students may have been involved. The, the The short answer is we, we survey a lot of users, but I would don't know off the top of my head how many of those are based in Australia or the US or the UK. I'm sure we could find out, um, but okay. I don't know off the top of my head now. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Given that uh, I think two thousand uh, participants responding is quite a good sampling. Okay, well, how about I read through them? So we've got a 50 to 60%, an unknown, a 50%, 60%, 8%, and the 4 to 5%. Um, and then there's a, a 50 and a 30 as well. Okay, so it seemed like um, they're quite prevalent around the 50 to 60 mark? Yep. Okay. I'm going to close the poll and quiz. Oh, here we go. Here's share results. I... What's happening now? Anything coming up at that end? No. no, it is a matter of clicking on that view details so that I can see it's, right. it's up towards the top of the screen a bit more. You mightn't have access to it. No, you okay. should actually, though. I'm, I'm mm. not sure. Sorry, Jim. Right, that's okay. Well, I'll move on because um, um, most of it sounds like a lot of people uh, probably put in uh, around this percentage, around the 50 to 60 mark. Um, this is from... Um, a study done by Newman and Laylor, and you can see here that 65% uh, of students with disabilities were registered with uh, with services. Um, I'm not sure which country this was done in, but um, it, that's a, a very recent survey done in uh, study done in 2019. So it that has a big impact, I guess, too, because what it means is um, what can we do about um, catching those students who fall through the gaps in terms of their uh, ability to participate and uh, optimise their learning. So I think there, that's where we can start to talk about building accessibility uh, for all, rather than focusing on just um, building accessibility for those who are registered for services. And so if we can shift that focus um, in our conversations of um, assistive technology being adjustments for an individual to being an option for all students, um, then we can try and catch some of those 65% uh, of students who do not register for services and who really do miss out on having um, those adjustments provided that they sorely require to get through their studies. Okay. So I suppose in a way it means about um, continuing to work you know, towards that principle of universal design for learning, where we're trying to minimise those barriers to accessibility and maximise the learning for every student. Um, it was interesting, I, I was listening to the recent uh, UDL symposium hosted by ATSET, where Dr. Thomas Tobin stated that if you ask 10 people to define universal design for learning, you'd get 10 different answers. But what, I, uh, what pricked up my ears was he also went on to say that when you're talking to colleagues about UDL, you focus on the D part of the UDL. You focus on, on the design aspect of it and talk about universal design for learning um, being something that's intentional, it's an intentional effort in the design of our learning spaces. And that really resonates with us at Glean because we intentionally designed Glean to enable equity and access to information and how the learner chooses to process that information. And by building accessibility for the start and enabling everyone outside of accessibility services to have access, we aim to create that more inclusive user experience that, you know, that works for every learner, regardless of their ability or their learning preference. And, you know, that um, hits home with that survey. As I said, 91% you know, of students say they can better manage information. So if we can catch those students who aren't in accessibility service, that would be fantastic. So that's uh, one um, thing to keep in mind is about changing that shift of focus from individuals to universal design. And we know that uh, many institutes are doing that, whether um, they're implementing new design in uh, very big ways or even in just very small ways. And there was a study done by Newman, Mortis and Layla in 2019, and it showed that when there's a whole site approach to adjustments and having universal design, that students are twice as like likely to access support when it's made you know, universally available. Um, interestingly, so there are also 70% more likely to graduate 
uh, versus the average graduation rate of students with disabilities, which is less than 50%. So universally accessible support can make a really big impact on keeping students engaged and ensure they're actually taking up the support when they need it without having to disclose and ask for it. And um, we know this is happening around the world and we know it's happening here in Australian Institute as well. Um, the mainstream of assistive technologies that's happening, and uh, for example, in Western Sydney University, they recognised that students who had to disclose their disability to get access to assistive technology, and, and by choosing not to disclose, really those students were missing out on accessing those technologies. So this barrier was you know, negatively affecting the student experience. So Western Sydney saw that opportunity for more students to become empowered, and they reframed their conversations and opened up access to assist technology to anyone who, including those students who weren't registered through accessibility services. So they were trying to destigmatize AT and offer it to everyone. And um, Western Sydney offer, um, witnessed a big uptake of technology, assist technology. And it wasn't just for students with disability who um, weren't registered, but also for students who are international students or English language learners or students who just were finding uh, learning challenging due to some sort of um, mental health issues that may have come up spontaneously. So they were getting, um, their strategy delivered quite immediate results. And um, that really came out from um, the research that they did when they were submitting uh, for an innovation award in 2021. So that's what we've, you know, we um, have gathered data from around the world showing evidence that when you have universally available technology, um, it makes a huge difference to um, catching those students who fall through the gaps. You cast a wider net. And that's why we've introduced site-wide licensing. So it's going to make sure we can catch that 60, 50, 61, 65%, whatever you the figure may be on your campus, catching those students to have uh, better um, opportunities to engage with their learning with this, this technology they require. And as I said, um, having site-wide also benefits students who don't have disability. Um, I know that there was a study done that um, retention of students who are doing um, higher degrees with English as a second language, there was a one in three dropout rate. As that, that's because um, there's a heavy cognitive load on processing language. And for those students whose first language isn't English, that cognitive load of translating and processing is really significant. So what we'd like to do now is um, just recap very quickly, um, just four dot points, because I'd like to hand over to Lee to show you how um, the accessibility, um, which is first and foremost in, in our design, has worked towards universal design and made um, the drive of accessibility for universal design because it means now that you know, students can actually have a technology that offers them multiple ways of processing information, so multiple ways of expressing it, um, what they know, but also representing what they process as well. So Glean does that because you know it records um, the audio, you can add slides and notes and images, and that content can be converted into a transcript or um, audio or notes. So students can choose their modality preferences as well. Um, and it's going to catch those students, as we said, who that 65% of students that aren't accessing um, assist technology. We've also made sure that site-wide implementation will be really simple from an administrator's point of view. At, at the moment, for those of you who do have Glean on your campus, there is um, an element of administration that's required where you invite students and then you might need to revoke licenses and reallocate them to other students. Whereas with um, having a site-wide license for all, it's a much simpler way to deploy with a single sign-on and also something called just-in-time uh, provisioning as well. So it makes it easier to manage hundreds, if not thousands of students to quickly get on board and start to use Glean. And of course, because it is um, offered as site-wide, obviously there is a very different pricing structure for it because um, 
it's now been um, procured as a site-wide license. And so there are lots of cost-effective benefits uh, in terms of pricing going that way. So if you're interested in getting uh, finding out more about site-wide, please, after this uh, webinar, please reach out. and We're very happy to have a conversation with you um, around that. At the moment, there are four institutions in Australia and New Zealand who are actively considering site-wide licensing. And, um, and not just the, uh, for Glean, but they've also asked about our other package, which is Glean plus live captioning with it. And we can certainly talk a bit more about the advantages of um, thinking about including live captioning um, in procuring Glean. Um, now I'd like to talk about final slide, uh, just quickly to say that you know, we recognize that Glean uh, works really well for so many students, but as individuals, we all know that we all have quite unique learning profiles and preferences and you know, different strengths and weaknesses. And we recognize that students have different accessibility needs. And really that's what gives us our focus at Glean on inclusive design when it comes to product development and any uh, feature releases that we have. And um, it's at the, really at the heart of our design and decisions we make about these releases. And I'm going to hand over to Lee because as he demonstrates these latest features um, and explains the learning science behind them, I, as I said, I think you quickly recognize the inclusive design elements that shine through. So Lee, um, I'll just hand over to you and I'll stop sharing my screen and, and um, hand over. Thank you, Jim. I will then start sharing my screen. If you just bear with me for one moment, I'll make sure I'm sharing the right screen. There we go. So hopefully you are now seeing exactly the same slide you had up a second or two ago. So what I would like to do now, I get to do the fun part, I'll be honest, because I'm now going to be able to show you what we've been doing with Glean across the past few months and the enhancements that we've made to make it even more usable. And it is worthwhile saying that pretty much all of the feature development we do comes directly from feedback from users. Um, we don't like to develop features just for the sake of it. We want to make sure that they are things that people are actually going to be using. So our, our user base, or our, our best product team, they, they tell us what they need and, and then we go ahead and build it. Now, I am going to show you these things, but just to give you a, a quick flavor of what I'm going to go through, uh, we'll cover a few tweaks and feature enhancements, first of all, that we've made. It will only take me a few minutes, but we're going to cover a few things to do with how we manage events a little bit better, some tweaks to our focus timer, how we work with transcription and a new quick notes offering we've got in Glean. But then we've got some more fundamental changes that I want to show you as well. So as Jim mentioned, we now support multiple languages with our transcription and captioning tool. So I'll show you how that works. And then we've got three features which I find incredibly useful myself because I use Glean all the time in meeting environments. The first one is our Scribble tool, which now allows users to capture hand drawings and, and equations, which are incredibly useful if you're studying STEM type subjects. And then we'll have a little look at a few of the features we've got that are powered by all of these new developments in the world of AI. The first one being a, a tool that encourages active recall, which is a, a multiple choice quizzing tool called QuizMe, which I find incredibly useful. And then last, we'll finish by showing you a feature that is going to be officially released by the end of August, but that you can test out now called AI Outlines. And this is designed to make your events much easier to navigate, um, a feature that we're all very excited about. So that is the things that I want to go through. I'll come out of my slides now and then jump straight into Glean so I can show you these things. Now, I'm just going to start off with those feature enhancements, first of all, very quickly. Um, one of the challenges we had for quite a while with Glean is that students were deleting events when they thought they were finished with them and then changing their mind. And there wasn't a way to recover events in Glean previously. So we've added a, a tweak to this recently, whereby when you go and delete 
an event out of here now, it is not permanently deleted. In fact, it is moved to a recycle bin, as I call it, or as we've labeled it in here, a trash bin. So when you do a delete an event and you change your mind, it's not gone anymore. You can jump into your trash and you can see they all sit there now for 90 days. So if you do need to recover one of those events that you've deleted accidentally, it's as easy as restoring that now. Small tweak, but one that is going to make it a little bit easier to work with events. Uh, quickly onwards, I mentioned we've made a tweak to our focus timer, which is an underutilized feature, I would say, in Gleam. If you've never seen the focus timer before, what it is is a feature that enables you to follow a Pomodoro technique while studying, which is one where you would study in kind of dedicated periods of time and then and then have a break. Now, previously, if you wanted to do one of these study sessions and use the focus timer, you would go into your notes and click this icon here to start the timer. You could choose increments of 10, 15 or 30 minutes and then you start that timer. Now, previously, once you'd started it, there was nothing you could do. Um, you just had to let the timer run through. And you also got no visibility on the amount of editing that you've done in your notes during this time. So you might go in here and edit some of your notes or whatever, um, but you wouldn't know how much work you'd done. And the change we've made to this is that now at any point while this timer is running, you can click back on here. You can pause it if you need to have a break in your study session. You can stop it prematurely. But more importantly, you get a running tally of what you're doing in that session which we've found has increased the usage of this focus timer straight away as soon as we release this. So not a new feature, but a tweak to an existing one that will make it a bit more usable. On the theme of Twix, Twix to existing systems, we've also made changes to our transcript recently. One of the most requested things we were getting with the transcript, as I'm sure you know we have in here, was the ability to export the entire transcript because you've always been able to select snippets of this and post it into your notes, but there was no easy way to get the entire thing out of Gleam. So now very simply, if you go into your event options menu, you now have this option to copy that entire transcript to your clipboard. And then of course, once it's on your clipboard, you can post this anywhere you like. So if you want to put this into a blank Word document or a Google doc, just open up a blank doc and you can now paste that entire transcript outside of Gleam. But there's another small tweak to the transcript that I think is incredibly useful. And, and I really like this one because it was something that I asked for um, and, and I demanded basically. And, and that is that you can now adjust the highlighting colors during transcription playback. Because as I'm sure you know, when you play back the transcript in Glean, if you use this before, it does the, the dual highlighting. If you haven't seen this before, actually, I'll just click play on here just to remind you of what this looks like. Today, we're going to be talking about studying. You might think that studying is straightforward, but- so It plays back the recording, plays back the transcript, highlights the individual words, fantastic. But the problem I've always had with this is that these colors don't always suit the way some students like to work and need to work. So we've added a, a feature or a tweak to feature recent, recently, which allows you to change all these background colors. And that is by changing the, the theme in Gleam. It's actually another function that a lot of people don't realize you can do. So you see how you've got this blue theme in here. You can actually toggle between seven different themes. So you just click this little rainbow icon and it toggles between them. Now, previously, that was just a superficial change. It changed the header bar, changed a couple of other little buttons, but did not much else. But now we've synced this with the highlighting colors. So if you do need a different color to that blue, you've now got a better option. And this is my personal preference. I just find it easier to follow the transcript back when I've got this pink color on. So now you'll see when I play the transcript, it has that different background. Today, we're going to be talking about studying. You might think that studying is straightforward. And it's just small tweaks like this, which makes it a bit more personalized to the end user and just ultimately makes the, the features we have a bit more usable. The last tweak that I want to run through before I get to the main feature changes though, is a very, very small 
change, and that is a naming change. So we've always had a function in here that we call lightning mode. You might remember there was a little lightning bolt button in the corner. And lightning mode was great. Um, I encouraged people that I work with to use lightning mode because it is a way of reducing distractions while you're taking notes. Because what happens is when you go into lightning mode, it does two things. It gets rid of the text box. Now, this is quite important for a lot of people whilst they're in a live lecture environment, because quite often you, you want to discourage someone from writing too many text notes. That can inhibit your ability to listen and pay attention to somebody. So by removing that text box, it removes the you know, distraction of doing that and just leaves you with the labels, options and the slides. It also then puts a little shortcut icon um, or letter or number under all of the options you've got available. So you can literally like add a slide by pressing S, add an important label by pressing two. So it's really good. And we did some analysis and discovered that people who were using lightning mode were using Gleam more in class. They seem to be able to identify important things more often. They can add slides easier. They can add important labels easier. But the problem is no one knew what lightning mode was because what does lightning mode mean? if you've never used Gleam before or been trained on Gleam. So we changed this to Quick Notes two weeks ago now. And since that very small change, it's nearly doubled the usage of that function. And we think we're confident by our data that people who are using this get more out of Gleam. So doubling the usage of it is going to double the amount of people who can benefit from that function. So it just goes to show that it doesn't even have to be new features you can do in this. If you look at the data, and you can change things a little bit and make existing functions more discoverable, it, it can have a huge difference. So that's a quick summary of the tweaks that I wanted to run through, all very recent. We've all done them in the past month that they've came out. I want to go now on to the other more fundamental things. So we have had a live captioning and transcription feature within Glean for a while now. But the challenge we always had with this is that it only supported English, which if you needed to record in a different language is obviously a challenge. So we can now support multi-languages, quite straightforward. Now, I don't speak any other language, and I'm not going to attempt to try and speak a different language. But what I do have is a little audio recording in German, actually, that I want to use to demonstrate how this works. Why German? It's the only thing I studied when I was at school, so I've got a vague understanding of it. Anyway, that part of it's irrelevant. I just want to show you what this looks like and how it works now. So if you're doing this with live captioning, as you will know, if you have the version with live captions, you have this CC button. And when you turn this on, you can now select the language you need to caption in. So if I click on English and then choose the language I need to use, so German in this instance, so I'll choose Deutsch. And then I'm going to start recording and I'll play back that audio file. Now, I'm going to be quiet for a moment, but I will be playing back the audio file. I'll start recording just so you can see it caption in German for a few seconds. Uh, it's only about 30 seconds of this audio I'll play. So let me hit record, hit microphone, and then I'll be silent and you'll hear that audio playing in a second or two. Sehr geehrte Herren Präsidenten, lieber Emmanuel Macron und sehr geehrter lieber Sergio Mattarella, sehr geehrte Frau Präsidentin der Kommission, elect, wie man so schön sagt, liebe Ursula von der Leyen, lieber Ministerpräsident des Bundeslandes Hessen, Exzellenzen, liebe Christine Lagarde und natürlich... I will just stop that there. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. It's just nice now that you can do this in different languages. And that feature also transfers through to the transcript as well. So now when you go and create a transcript in Glean, previously, when you clicked on this transcribe audio button, it would just do it in English automatically. But now that we have all of those options, it gives you a list to choose from. It will always default to English, so you can just hit transcribe if that's what it's in. But again, if it's done in a different language, select it and then transcribe it in that language. 
obviously this is a completely useless feature if you don't need to record in a different language, but if it's fundamental to the course that you're on, we can now support you a lot better with it. Onwards to our other new features. And one of my favorite features we've got in here now, and one that had been demanded of us for a long time, was the ability to do handwritten notes and annotations. Because if you're studying on a STEM type subject and you're in class and you need to jot an equation down, then the features we had previously didn't really support this very well. So what we've added is a scribble function. Now, Scribble is available to use on both the laptop and the mobile device. If you're doing it on the laptop, your Scribble feature is this one here. So it now allows you to click on here, and this will basically give you a blank canvas to work with. You've got a pen, a highlighting tool, shapes tool. You can change the color and the line thickness, and then you can now draw on the screen like so. So it allows you to capture whatever you want a lot easier. Now I'm demonstrating this initially on the laptop, but I think it's worthwhile saying that this feature's probably gonna give you a better experience if you're using Glean on the mobile app, quite simply because you're gonna have a touchscreen device when you're doing this on Glean mobile. I had to do that scribble using my mouse, which is a little bit fiddly. So I'm just actually gonna jump over now to show you my iPad, because it's easier to demonstrate it on here. So let me just quickly create a new event. We'll start the recording. And if you're doing this on Glean Mobile, to access the Scribble tool, it's just down in the bottom right-hand corner there. You can see you've got the Scribble function you can bring on. And then I can just use either a stylus or my finger to draw on the screen. As you can see, that's the pen option. You can change the color, the line thickness. You've also got the highlighting tool, which is the one next to it. And like I said, you've also got a shapes tool as well. So if you want to do some more technical type drawings in here, you can do. This has only been released about a month or so, but it's just meaning that it supports more user types, especially as I said, those on, on STEM type subjects. So it's a fantastic little addition to Glean. We'll stop that there. Okay, we've covered the feature enhancements, we've covered multi-language support, we've covered Scribble. What we're now gonna move on to are my potentially favorite tools in Glean. And these are the ones that are powered by AI. It's actually worthwhile saying that AI has been in Glean for a while now. I mean, that is what creates the transcript. That's what powers the live captions. But we're in a new world where there have been developments, leaps and bounds in this field. And we've been considering for quite a while now how we can leverage all of this technology to the benefit of students, not to the detriment. And I think that's the important thing, because I firmly believe that AI absolutely has the the power to enhance the learning experience, but it's really got to be done in a considered way. Um, I think if you just get AI to automatically write notes up for you, which you can do, it might take a little bit less effort on your behalf. But I really have to question how much learning is going to be involved in that, because it's during the process of note creation where learning happens. And as I'm sure you know, learning requires effort. It's necessarily effortful. Um, it requires engagement, it requires practice and friction. And if we use, in my belief, AI to an extent where it removes any of that, then you might have a set of notes at the end of it, but you might have no idea or comprehension of that content. And that's the purpose of what we're trying to help people with, is to understand and comprehend content. So that's what we're not doing. But we still can utilize this technology, and that's what I want to show you now, how we're utilizing this. And the first feature to show you in this realm is something called QuizMe. Because learning science tells us that retrieval practice is a fantastic study technique. Um, and one of the ways in which you can do this is by asking questions on content that you have. So let's just give you a scenario. You've recorded with Glean, you've got an event like this, slides, a few brief notes, et cetera. 
and it's now after class and you're going to come back and elaborate on these notes and write them up in more detail. I always have been a strong advocate that before you go ahead and start listening back to things in Glean, find out what you can remember from class first. I mean, just picture this webinar you're on now. If you come back to this recording in a few weeks or a month's time, instead of just listening back to us, wouldn't it be good for you to jot down or recall what you can remember from this first? It's always a good study strategy. And this is what QuizMe allows you to do. So if you came back to an event like this and you wanted to run a quiz, you can now click on this little icon here. And what this is going to do is to allow you to generate a quiz based on the content of your recording, all powered by AI. And it's very simple to use. That's what's nice with all of these tools. They're easy to use, but they are powerful in nature. So as you can see, it starts to ask me questions now. So what is the process of actively recalling information from memory recalled? That is a retrieval practice. It is what this tool's designed to help with. So you can see these are all multiple choice, tells you if you've got the right answer, and then you go through and try to answer it. If you get them wrong, like I did there, it obviously tells you you've got it wrong and then highlights the right answer for you. Now, initially, it will ask you five questions. I'm just clicking through these now. And when you get to the end, you then get to see a little summary. So it tells you what you got right and tells you what you got wrong. And it's what you got wrong that I think is the most valuable part of this, because time is precious. And when you come back after a class, you don't really want to waste, waste the wrong word, but you should probably not spend all of your time reviewing stuff that you already know and that you already understand. You should spend that valuable time reviewing stuff that you don't understand and you can't recall very well. And this helps you identify those gaps in your knowledge from that lecture or seminar or wherever you've been using Glean in. So I think it's an incredibly powerful tool. And in case you're wondering, you can, after you finish one of these quizzes, take it again, or you can generate a new quiz with a new set of questions based on that content. Give it a go. If you've got a Glean account, have a play with this. Um, you'll probably be surprised by how good the question generation is. Now, the last thing that I want to show you, still in the realm of AI, is a, a preview. This feature is not released yet, but you can actually try it now, and Glean users can try it now, because what we did about six months ago is move to a system whereby when we release major feature releases like Scribble, like QuizMe, we actually make them available to preview beforehand. If you've never stumbled across this before, any features that are available to preview, you can turn on by clicking on your account button in the corner and going on this feature preview. Anything available will show up in here. Now I've got a few different things available on my account. You'll only have one. And the one we want to look at is this, the AI outline. So I'm going to turn that on. Now, once you've turned this feature on, you get an extra tab here alongside your audio and transcript. Now, again, how this works is dead simple, but I want to explain what it's aimed for. Now, we know that some students are more proficient at using Glean than others. Some students will not need this because some are very good at hitting that record button, adding slides, identifying key points that they want to go out to, adding a few brief text notes, and basically generating their own outline. Because this is what this tends to be after you've finished, an outline of the event you've just sat in. For those students, probably don't need it. However, we're equally aware that we have a number of students who will press that record button in Glean and do very little else. And maybe that's just because they've been so engaged in the class, they haven't had time to make notes or forgot to take notes, or maybe they just haven't been able to do that for whatever reason. Now, previously, that would pose a challenge because it means you would have all of the audio, but you would have no outline to go through. And the only thing you could have really done in that scenario was use the transcript, because if you toggle into the transcript, then you can search for things. So I can bring up my search tool in here, and then I can look for things that I know are in here. So maybe I'm looking for any reference in here to higher grades, search for whatever it is you want, and it'll highlight any instance of that 
in your transcript. So that was always one way to navigate the recording. But of course, that relies upon you knowing what to search for. You might come back to one of these events weeks, months after you recorded it, and you just don't know what you're looking for to review. And this is where AI Outlines is really going to help. Because what it will allow you to do is to go in here and then get the AI to generate an automated outline of this event for you. So if I go and click on this Generate AI Outline button, it's now analyzing the content. And it's trying to find different topics that were discussed. And it's going to break those topics down into chapters. It'll give each one a heading and then also a quick sentence underneath explaining what's in this chapter. Now, this is not trying to not write the notes for you. This is not telling you what's important and what's not important. But what it is doing is giving you a mechanism for going back to the content you actually want to review. Because it may be that you go back to this now and say, right, yes, that's all the stuff that was covered in this lecture. And the stuff that I want to go and remind myself about is, is this, retrieval practice methods. That's what I care about. So the way this will work is you'll be able to click on one of these chapter headings and it will immediately take you to the point in your audio recording where this information was discussed. So then you can play it back and the onus would still be on you to write your notes up in your own words at your own pace. But what it is doing is it's just helping you find the information. And that's what we're trying to do with this is we're trying to remove the wasted part of learning Hunting for stuff you care about is wasted time. Reviewing the stuff you care about is the valuable time. So that's why we've included this. So I love this feature. Um, give it a go again. If you've got a Glean account, you can go and trial this thing now. We're aiming for end of August for this to be publicly released. And what I mean by publicly released, quite simply, is that you won't have to go through the feature toggle to turn it on. It will just be there. And it doesn't matter what version of Glean you've got, you will get access to this feature. It's going to be a universal feature for everybody. And that is all of the stuff we've been doing in the past few months. Um, if you've been familiar with Glean before, hopefully you will find all of those features really useful. But like with anything, I always encourage people to go and try this stuff yourself because it's built in a very easy way and there's nothing better than putting it through its paces yourself and, and seeing how all of these features work with real life recordings that, that you maybe have. And that's everything that I wanted to go through. So I should I pass back to Jim? Yes, I think I should pass back to Jim. Um, yeah, I think if you want to bring your slides up while you're there, if you're sharing the screen. Ah, uh, yes, I'll, I'll bring my slide back so you can, there we go. Excellent. I'll jump in and just say thank you, um, thank you, Jim and Lee, um, for that. It's really good to see, you know, some of those features um, now becoming active, and certainly for some uh, that sneak peek um, of so, some of the upcoming things as well, which is really good. Um, I'm just going to pause for a moment um, so that you can grab a quick uh, breather after that presentation. But before we get into the questions, I would like to point out that we're just going to add a link into chat for our uh, survey of this webinar. Um, if you you could take a moment to fill that out now or after this webinar while it's still fresh in your mind your feedback would be greatly appreciated as this certainly helps us in evaluating and planning future webinars um, now on to the questions there's been a few questions particularly around some of the new tools that are there so um, I'll throw Jim or Lee whoever can answer there um, does the language support there in the transcription is Maori available as a language and Kiora across to our New Zealand colleagues joining us. Kiora to all of you too. Yes, we've had a couple of people from New Zealand already log um, a request for that. So it's actually in the system and uh, it's certainly something like we can't give a timeline, but it's duly noted because uh, we would dearly love to see um, an expansion of in Indigenous languages in, in available to in Glean for Glean users. Excellent. Good to hear. Thank you. Um, now, in terms of that exporting the transcript um, that you were showing there, Lee, with that, does that export uh, the full transcript into Word? Turn my mic on and off there. What it does when you, it, it copies it to your clipboard. The idea behind copying the full transcript to your clipboard is that you can just paste it into whatever platform you want to work in. So if you're a Word, Google Doc, put, put it in OneNote, wherever. It's on your clipboard, just paste it. 
Um, yep. So that's you can get it into Word. Excellent. Um, the and along with that, um, somebody just missed when the CC feature is, ro is rolled out. It's already available. Is that correct? The closed captions to turn those on. Yeah, so so we have two versions of Glean, um, basically one with captions and one without captions. It will depend on what package you have as to whether you, you have it or not, basically. Uh, if, you ha if you're on the package that you don't have it with, speak with Jim and, and he can tell you how you can get it, get it on there. Okay, so Natalie, that may answer your question. It may be a different version there, so maybe contact um, Jim to track down on your version. Excellent. Um, Another question there with the AI quiz me. Um, I did notice just before the actual quiz that it came up, it did have a accuracy kind of note there um, that this was AI generated. Um, so we've got a question here about how accurate is the quiz me if it is AI generated? Depends what you mean by accurate, I suppose. Um, what quiz me is doing technically is it's analyzing the transcript and then trying to decide, are there any suitable questions that I can ask on this? And then what it will do is obviously give you the right answer and generate plausible wrong answers, but it's only using the content in the transcript. So it's not looking for random information outside of this. So it can't kind of make up wrong answers. It can't like make up things, if you, if you get what I mean. Um, so, so yeah, it's entirely based off the transcription. Now, the fact that it asks um, five questions, this is a question for myself, that it asks five questions, can you set that length of question um, or the number of questions or you can just generate another five? Not, not now, but it's a feature that I would like to see. I think what we tend to do with feature releases is we roll something out, see how people are using it, gather some feedback and then iterate. And that's one of the things that I would like is that I'd like when you click on that create button to be able to select I want five, 10, 15, 20 questions or whatever it might be. Um, I've got lots of other ideas of how we could enhance the quiz me tool as well, to be honest. But yeah. um, <laughs> I've got a lot spinning around my brain as well. If you just want, I just want to be quizzed on that. this topic along with that AI outline yeah. to say, just quiz me yeah, on well, this section would be really nice. Or well, well, that's the thing. I think what we're trying to do with a lot of these features, like I say, is get them out there, see how they're getting used because uh, they're never perfect. But the beauty of having a, a, a platform like we have is that we can iterate often. You don't have to wait for a new version to come out. If we improve something, you just get it straight away. Uh, so yeah, there, there will be tweaks and changes that come to that over the, over the coming weeks and months, I'm sure. Excellent. Um, and another question here from Andrew. Um, just he's assuming that uh, Scribble uh, would work well on a laptop with a touch screen, just as it was, I suppose, with your iPad. Yeah, it absolutely. Uh, I think you can use it with a mouse on a laptop, don't get me wrong, but obviously drawing if you're trying to write text with a mouse is challenging. Um, if you're doing the more the, the shapes type tool and maybe drawing graphs and little charts and stuff like that, absolutely fine. But you're right. If you have a touch type of input into your laptop, whether it's a touchscreen laptop or, or a touch device, because you, know, you can buy little you know, touch devices that, that would allow you to draw as well. Then, then yes, absolutely would have would have no problem with it. Excellent, thank you. Um, Could I add to that too? Yeah. Uh, with the quiz, uh, we've had people ask. That's great that you can create these annotations in uh, in Scribble. They said, what about um, annotating over the slides? And that's something else that we're looking at too. Uh, keeping in mind that we don't want to jeopardise the accessibility of the slides because at the moment you can extract the text, but finding a way that we can um, Add that that's being looked at too. I, I'd, I'd, I'd love to know how long the list of potential features is, um, given the <laughs> feedback that you receive. It must be quite quite a list. It, it's getting smaller because okay. the, the, the longer we've been out, the more we can make our way through the feature requests. But that one particularly, the ability to annotate directly on slide is the main one that remains. But the two things I can't show you, but that I can tell you we're working on and we're hoping to have them out within the next month or two is that feature annotation that the slides kind of combining slides with Scribble. Um, and then also we are going to be adding more text formatting options because there's not much you can do with the text in terms of bolding it, um, italicizing it, highlighting it. We're going to be adding them very, very soon as well. All intended to be out by the start of the, well, academic year in, in the UK, at least in September. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, that's the questions that are there and I am just conscious of the time. So we'll wrap up the webinar here and I'd ask everybody, please join me in thanking Jim and Lee for their presentation today. Um, an email will be sent out shortly uh, to everybody that was at this webinar with when the recording is available on the AdSet website and please feel free to share this with your colleagues. Um, just a reminder as well, we've got some upcoming webinars uh, on Tuesday the 6th of August. Um, this webinar are inherent requirements, a barrier to diversity and on Thursday the 22nd of August we have a workshop on exploring opportunities for reciprocal dialogue between faculty and students around UDL implementation and inclusive design. Um, and if you're not already signed up for the AdSet newsletter, you can do that by the link that's being put into chat as well. Um, and finally, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining us today, to Helen for the live captioning in the background, and to the AdSet crew, Jane and Kylie, uh, for making sure that all of this runs smoothly. Um, I realised the poll didn't, but this is a new feature that we're, that we're playing with in some of the updates, So, um, but we got there in the end. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Jim and Lee, um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.